everyone and welcome to Lifestyle. I'm Denise Simons, your host, and this is a show about bringing life into your home and helping you create your style. And we do it all by giving you tips and inspiration and resources right here in Middle Tennessee to create everything you see on the show. Well, you're invited to stay with us to chat with Erlene Mandrell and to meet her kitty, Harley, and also to see what she created for her furry little friend that he absolutely loves. And you've heard on the show, I've talked about Foamworks. I just had them do something out at my house. Well, guess what? Josh Nash is here, and he's going to be explaining what is Foamworks? What is this insulation? What is this big buzz where the U.S. Department of Energy actually says this can save you 50% on your energy? Well, Josh is the guy to tell you. It's a home. Uh, they operate this company. It's They do a fantastic job, and he knows all the details. He's going to be talking to us. And we're also going to be talking with Linda Barry of Bella Linia, and you get the chance to meet her new mascots, her little ducklings. Oh, I'm telling you, they are so cute. You do not want to miss this. This is coming up. She's also going to be talking about how to create baskets for adults, gift baskets that you can personalize, and she's going to show us ways that you can do that. Also, unusual furniture items that you can use in your bathroom as well as your bedroom. She's got some great tips. Oh, and I just got back from Design Market at High Point, North Carolina, and guess what? I took some pictures in the showroom. Some people let you do that, and I brought them back because you know what? I want you to be in style. I want you to know what is in style. We're going to show all of that. But right now, let's go over and visit Erlene Mandrell who rolled up her sleeves and did a little do-it-yourself. Today we're building cat perches and rock walls, but we don't need a contractor or a stonemason because I've got a friend of mine here who's going to show us how to do it. Well, she's an actress, a musician, and a model. You've seen her on Hee Haw and Love Boat, but my favorite is Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters. Her link to be with you, as always. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey, you and I were talking about you are a self-proclaimed do-it-yourselfer. I love it. You know, it's um, it's fun to have projects going on when they finish when you finish them. It's rewarding, but it's always really interesting to learn things. You don't have to know how to start with. You work with it and get in trouble. You can call somebody, but I mean, really, you, that's how you learn. I love doing new things. But you said that you really didn't grow up learning this because you were on the road all the time, and you know, when you were home, you needed to be studying. So it was years later when you got your house that you started projects. Yes, there was a house that I got that was an old. Uh, older farmhouse, but it was a, a pretty big house, but there was so much that I wanted to do. And Barbara always says, start something and finish it. I have things going all the time. If something gets finished, it's like, yay, now let's, you know. Well, something that you did finish is your cat perch. Now tell me, what was the inspiration for this and who was it for? I actually <laughs> had thought about it before because I had a cat when I was in Gallatin and then my son Derek came back in town with his little cat that's a big cat now actually Harley and my mom said you know we got to teach Harley that once he comes in the house not to be on the table mm. not to be on the counter but we, we want to have some place for him to sit this high and so I decided to build this cat perch but uh, I thought about them before, but I looked up and I got different ideas, and I had this scrap lumber. Now, I don't know how to do blueprints or anything. I was going to ask you, did you have a drawing? or how? Well, I did, actually did, did have a drawing at one time, and, and I w I, it got thrown away. Trust me, it did not look like anything anybody could recognize. But the main thing I thought about was, okay, I have lumber, and I need to make it sturdy enough. Right. And I thought about that, but what I didn't want to do is on a layer, you know, you can think about it, I can put a screw straight through, right. and it can be very strong if you have like the, the four, oh we got five even at uh -huh. the end on the bottom, and you can screw that and make it sturdy. What I didn't want to do is the next layer straight above, because then right. you have to screw from the side. The side. And mm -hmm. I've seen people do that, but it's really hard and tricky to make it sturdy enough. So so the main thing I thought about was I want the next set of legs to be in different positions so I can still screw through the bottom. I went out and bought, the only thing I really spent money on was the carpet. You don't want to put the carpet on after you screw it, so the thing you want to remember is to cover the carpet. But I did stack it up and send you a picture with it stacked up that. before the carpet, but it was not screwed. It was like okay. dominoes. If I had touched it, it would have, just it would have all fallen down. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you now, when you chose, as a designer, I have a burning question. When you chose that carpet, was it to match the interiors or did you let your client Harley 
decide <laughs> which carpet was going to be. He does like clawing at this carpet. I did not <laughs> want it to be really, really thick. Uh -huh. You know, that would be harder to Cause cover. Because you need to be able to stretch it over and then use your staple. That's what I, you know, and maybe some people can do the other, but I made it easy on myself, so <laughs> yeah. yes. And the other thing was, there was just a roll of this carpet that was on sale. It was like $15 for this whole thing. And yet, and yet it seemed just perfect for molding, so it, it, it just worked Well, you out. did a great job, and as we can see, Harley absolutely loves it. Now, you've got another project that I want to talk about as well. Okay. So, Arlene, you recently built a rock wall. Now, that was a big undertaking. What was the inspiration for that? It's at Louise's house, and it was, Louise came to me and she said, you know, outside of the bedroom window, I have, you know, off to the right, she has the Cumberland River, it's a beautiful oh, view, nice. but this one section right outside the window, there really wasn't anything. So she said, I'm thinking about putting a rock wall and um, like some flowers and stuff like that, and, and wanted me to help her. And she said, but it goes down, right where I want it, it slopes, it's where the hill is, and it right. slopes way down. So she had to figure out a way to build the rocks from down low first, and then start I I making them even as you come around. You're building on the lowest end and then Absolutely. work your way up. Right. Well, that would be unusual. I mean, you would think you would start on the other, but that's opposite. Well, yeah. And what was really neat about it was you had to work where it comes down quite a ways, but you didn't have to go all the way around with rocks for a while. Right. You know, right. but you know where there's certain areas that you come up to the dirt, you might have to dig the dirt to make it even and then lay and then when it comes even with the ground, you just put your next one from there, you don't even have to dig right there. So it was right. really nice when we'd come up even with the ground and then the layers would start getting even. So there was now those digging. look really heavy. They I were 50 mean, pound rocks. 50 pound rocks. Uh, now did someone deliver them to the side or did you all She, had, <laughs> she had them delivered and she actually, I have to confess, I was supposed to be there. I had been planting some fruit trees for my mom and grapes and stuff uh -huh. and using the hole and all that and I don't normally have too bad of back problems but just at that time, and it sounds like an excuse, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm so I, sorry I can't make it for the unloading of the 50 pound rock. That because so my good. back is hurting. Yeah. And she told me she'd wait a couple days, but she oh, didn't. And she said, oh, she I'll wait ahead. on you, honey. And Don't she worry. didn't, though. She did almost she all that by herself. Wow. And um, then when I got there, I helped finish that. And then the one with the telephone pole. Now, they were the smaller rocks, so I really didn't do a lot of the lifting of the 50 pounds. But, um, you know, then I did dig for her and help her even that out because that was uneven also. She wanted to plant rose uh, trees and stuff, but she had a birdhouse. Oh. And then she, with the telephone pole, she was afraid. She's like, I need to put this far enough. How far? If a snake decided to climb that telephone pole, how far can he reach <laughs> out where he cannot get over to the birds? Oh, right. I, I wouldn't have thought of that, but she's right. You know, I've seen that so happen. She's protecting the birds, but she's planted all these beautiful foliage, and now you built this beautiful rock wall that when she looks out her bedroom window, oh, what a sweet yeah, she really thing did. all of you sisters yeah, do for each other. And it was neat for her, but she was thinking about, you know, doing it for her husband kind of more than herself, I oh, guess. Oh, I love that. And Isn't I love sweet? the fact that all you mandrills pitch in, you roll up your sleeves, and you help each other out. Yes. That's oh. great. One of these days we'll talk about Barbara because she works just as hard as the rest, yes. We'll do that Thank on you. the next time. <laughs>